guys wow this s9 tablet review has been long overdue so i want to thank you so much for your patience today we're going to be doing an arc review and second unboxing of this tablet this is the second tablet which samsung gifted to me in the first unboxing the tablet couldn't connect the s pen at all no matter what app i used the pen was still undetected and i can only make marks with hand gestures at this point apparently the first gifted tablet had some issues and I got it checked at Samsung Service Center. The findings were that the tablet's magnetic field or pen digitizer was faulty. Samsung did apologize for the red defect and said that this was shocking, even for them. It took more than a month for the replacement to arrive and thankfully, all was well the second time around. The S9 was actually heavily marketed towards artists. So here's my objective review to help you make an informed decision if you think it's right up your alley. I've been eyeing on tablets that aren't Apple just to see how they compete versus the iPad. This S9 has 12 gigs RAM, 256 for storage, and an 11 inch display. It's so portable that it fits my tiny backpack. The exterior looks pretty good, and I feel that the tablet has a fairly solid build. Speakers are enhanced by AKG and Dolby Atmos, so it fills the room so well while I'm painting, giving a rich audio experience. Inside, you'll see the S Pen, charger cable, and SD card pin, which means more room for memory storage. It took some effort to unwrap this. I think the design could be improved, since unboxing is a part of the experience and first impression of the tablet. The pen does support bi-directional charging, but note that snapping it to the side won't charge the stylus, as this only works on the back magnet. Sometimes it takes a bit of guesswork to snap the stylus onto the tablet. The side's magnetic field is not as strong as the back due to less surface area, so docking it doesn't feel as secure. First impression of turning on the tablet. Right off the bat, the tablet looks great but I was a bit put off by the amount of time it took to set up. Fast forward, I'm installing Infinite Painter, Clip Studio Paint, and Heavy Paint. I'm mostly familiar with Painter and CSP, so most art demos will be done on these Procreate alternatives. The pen's rubber mat nib provides extra friction and dampens any tapping sounds, unlike the Apple Pencil. However, tilt accuracy is a bit limited since only the nib is detected by the screen. So far it's a good pen and there's no lag at all. The soft rebound of the nib against the screen was akin to drawing on a stack of paper. It didn't feel like I was drawing on a hard glass surface. Here's a line test to check for waviness, just to check if there are dead pixels on the screen. Slower hand movements tend to create wavier lines. If I draw faster, waviness disappears and the line strokes feel a bit more confident. If you're heavy handed and love inking, this tablet might be heaven sent. The S Pen really suits hatching and line sensitive work. If you like fast, gestural sketching, lighter delicate strokes are not easily detected and some gaps may occur. If you like side shading, this could frustrate you because of tilt limitations in CSP. However, it works a bit better in Infinite Painter, which I will be demonstrating soon. The rubber tip might wear down quickly and I have experienced the pen slipping from my hand due to the smooth plastic body with minimal grip. Thankfully, there's a lot of choices online for nib replacements. One of the major reasons why I really like Infinite Painter is because I could easily change the brush size and opacity by swiping up and down or left and right using three fingers. Plenty of ways to further adjust brush pressure settings and opacity, as well as to suit one's preference by tweaking graph settings. Another noteworthy feature is the floating color wheel, which could also be docked at will. As mentioned earlier, the tilt detection is for some reason better in Infinite Painter than in CSP. Brush opacity and textural depth seems to be working fine here too. One caveat that I did not like about this tablet is the navigation. 
took me a long while to figure out I had to open the Play Store to find my downloaded apps every single time. It disrupted flow that should have been used for art creation. The navigation could be more straightforward. A menu within a menu is just a tedious thing in my humble opinion. Here's a quick demo in Heavy Paint. I've seen a lot of people use this app for plein air and still life painting. Heavy Paint seems to be working well on the S9. Good detection in terms of pressure and opacity, especially if you're into painting more often. Newsflash, I finally figured out that by pressing this three bar button, I could access apps that are currently running. Here I'm using Penup, which already comes installed in the tablet. I can only imagine one who loves to journal digitally would enjoy using this application. The stylus didn't seem to have opacity recognition in the Penup app, but I think settings can be adjusted with the app sliders menu. No tilt recognition either in Penup, I think Samsung should develop this painting app further to compete with other apps. I must say the tablet's display settings are better than the iPad. You can go super bright or dim, as well as adjust to a warmer or a cooler light. The S9 screen might be too small for most users. Probably better to opt for a bigger screen to get a more immersive experience. Before painting, I wanted to import my brushes to CSP for a more streamlined process. But when I dropped an SUT brush file from my Google Drive into CSP, the file format reads as unsupported. And when I tried importing an SUT file using the Open With option, the Samsung Health app opens up. I'm not sure why though. Sad to say none of my brushes got imported. Hopefully, Samsung could fix the brush importation issue in Clip Studio. I use personal keyboard shortcuts in CSP, so I tried connecting my Bluetooth keyboard to mimic desktop settings. When I hit Command Z, it doesn't execute undo, but I later found out that Samsung has Command Z automatically set to open settings. and can't be changed as far as I know. However, Control Z for undo works fine. Sorry, Mac users. I didn't touch the S9 for two weeks since then. Eventually, I switched to Infinite Painter since it's more intuitive and the app has good default brushes, like the Proco Pencil. If you would like to learn more about digital painting or art in general, scan the QR code on the bottom right to sign up for my mentorship. There are also plenty of digital brushes for Procreate, Photoshop, Clip Studio, as well as tutorials, so feel free to check those out. I'm art directing myself here, so when I feel like, okay, this speaks to me. This is the design we're going after. Now it's all about elbow grease, cleaning up the mess with clear, decisive line art. I love using the Proco pencil, which has a nice grain texture and thick to thin pencil stroke. While drawing, I always aim for a nice, streamlined design to get a more appealing look. And since this is stylized, I constantly think of playful, chunky shapes and forms, thinking of how far I can push design boundaries and proportions. It's all about design decisions at this point and learning to be okay with the choices made, as long as the character and the intention is not lost from the very beginning. This is the fun part right here. Details, wear and tear, anything that could make the character feel more believable, relatable, and fun. It's important not to go overboard with the details or it'll result in killing the focus of the overall character design. I tend to look at color flats as an opportunity for me to clarify the silhouette even more. And after filling up shapes, I just toggle the line art on and off, just to see if the design reads well. I 
I think of color flats like colored silhouettes, but also thinking that each color represents a different material, which is good workflow practice. Moving on to the rendering process, it's a great strategy to tackle shadows first. For this step, I often use the multiply layer mode. I like to switch it up by using a different app and get a mental reset. Since brush import can't be done in CSP, I just quickly made a custom round brush that I used for the rendering here. Pressure and opacity is average in CSP, but needs to improve in the S9 for it to be considered as a serious contender against the iPad. These features are the keys to controlling brush flow in order to push and pull form effectively. Having said that, there was a bit of a struggle in controlling brush flow, which resulted in a harder brush finish, meaning edges are more defined and less soft. Fortunately, this looked more appropriate for the character of the pumpkin dragon sculpt. Using a smaller brush during refinement helps to get into the nook and cranny such as the teeth. I'm just gonna go ahead and indicate some rim light to enhance the mode and pop out some forms. Here's a bit of the before and after to see how much of a difference it makes with just a bit more refinement. Alright, time to call this painting done and move on to the next. Darker interface programs accentuate screen glare, but putting a paper-like screen protector may help reduce reflectivity. I noticed the pinch to rotate gestures lack fluidity, causing minor snapping. This may frustrate others who are used to a smoother navigation. Camera stabilization is okay for taking steady photos and videos, but results are a bit saturated and contrasted than usual. Film grain is also noticeable in low light settings. I also did a quick run on Nomad Sculpt, totally new to the app, and I have zero knowledge, so yeah, I'm figuring this out as I go. Just playing around and trying out tools. For time's sake, I just sculpted a random dude on a basic sphere for demonstration purposes. So far, it was nice sculpting with the S Pen. It's freeing to be at this state of childlike curiosity whenever I try new programs. In my head, I'm like, oh, what does this do? Okay, that tool extrudes stuff into bulgy forms. This one's like a crease tool, let's indicate some eyelids without much grand expectations for the result. Then I found out that there was a 3D painting feature, kind of like spray painting a maquette sculpt. So I played around with that to give the character some life. Again, nothing fancy here, just something quick and rough. Let's try making this part into headphones. Everybody seems to wear them nowadays, at least in my neighborhood. To finish the job, I'll paint in some ultramarinish black for the hair. I simply prefer this cooler hue to ivory black. I've added some facial hair to frame the face. Compositionally, I thought it would work better to accentuate some visual weight on the mouth area.
We're going to town here, folks. Finally painting in some reds to show where the blood flow is on the face. So generally, the eyes, nose, lips, and cheeks. On the other hand, multitasking on the S9 is quite impressive. When I ran both 2D and 3D apps, they were both working smoothly with zero lags. Battery life lasted for about 7 hours a day on a single charge for extended sessions. Recharging until full would take about a couple of hours. But after a few days of usage, the tablet's backside generated quite a bit of heat, which kind of raises some concern on the durability and the lifespan of the tablet. The S9 is a considerable option because of its portability and stylus feel. It's great for remote work and doing tasks on the go, like quick sketches or cafe paintings. However, I still feel that the cons still outweigh the pros. In my opinion, it had some potential in being an iPad killer, had it not fallen short in some areas. What do you think of the S9? Share your thoughts or questions on the comment section below, and if you enjoyed watching this video, please do subscribe and spread the word. Thanks a lot for watching!